My Seven Chakras, episode 64. Well, uh, AJ, I would say I have two of them. First one is as simple as can be, and it's follow your fascination. One of my teachers had mentioned that on multiple occasions. As soon as I heard that, that caught my attention. And I have this big lettering with the words, follow your fascination in my office. And to me, that is when you open your heart and when you open your heart energy to inspiration. What is the message? What is your path? What is your Tao, so to speak? And when you follow it, either good, very good, or great things happen. The seven chakras, swirling vortices of energy, positioned throughout our body, from the base of the spine to the crown of the head. For thousands of years, this ancient wisdom has been passed on from master to disciple. What are the functions of these energy centers? And could these chakras help you unlock your destiny and find your true purpose? Welcome to My 7 Chakras. And now, your host, Aditya Jai Kumar. What's going on, action takers? AJ here, and welcome back to My 7 Chakras, your destination for advice, insights, and stories that will change your life one day at a time, one step at a time, one habit at a time, and one action at a time. Now, before we begin today's episode, I want to ask you this. Do you meditate? If you don't, why not? Meditation has huge benefits, and that is backed up by loads of research. I don't know about you guys, but I've met many people that have tried meditation, but have given up in the past. The challenge is that as soon as you close your eyes, the mental chatter begins. You begin to think about your to-do list. You can't focus. And before you know it, your eyes are opened and you are up and about your daily routine. If this is your story, I'm going to make it a little easier for you. Binaural beats. Binaural beats is a term given to a measured change in brain activity when presented with audio stimulus. To put it simply, it is an audio that uses next generation sound technology called Ohm Harmonics that makes it super easy for you to meditate like a monk in minutes. Now, most audios I've heard in the past sound a little industrial, you know, very mechanical, but Ohm Harmonics sounds very natural and soothing. Now, our friends at Mind Valley have put together a special gift for you. All you need is a pair of headphones and a few minutes of your time and you are all set. How do you get your download? Go to our website, that's my7chakras.com slash audio. That's right. So the, the page is slash audio. You got to go to my7chakras.com slash audio to download your free audio track. If it works for you, awesome. If it does not, we'll try something else. But just keep taking action. Once again, the link is my 7 slash audio and keep taking action. And now action takers, I am supercharged to bring you our featured guest for today, Dr. David Orman. David, are you ready to inspire? I am absolutely ready to inspire, AJ. Awesome. David is an acupuncture physician master herbalist, writer. He has lectured to Congress and taught at major universities. In addition to treating thousands, he has created the premier anti-aging formula on the market. So David, I've given you a short intro. So take a minute and tell us a little bit more about yourself. Sure. Thank you for that introduction. I have been involved in the field of anti-aging and natural medicine for about 25 years. I initially started in the field of uh, mental health, and uh, I quickly realized that was not for me. It's a very difficult, challenging field, and I certainly admire those who are in it, but it was not for me. And I was living in Washington, just outside of Washington, D.C. at the time, and met a, uh, an acupuncture physician by the name of Dr. Wu. And his claim to fame is that the band Steely Dan wrote a song about him. And he was a, quite a remarkable individual. And he introduced me to the worlds of uh, acupuncture and herbal medicine and nutrition. 
And I just became fascinated with that. And I went back to school in um, California and then opened up a practice years later when I finished in um, in South Florida. And I was there for many, many years. Mm-hmm. And then uh, I met who, a person who would eventually become my wife, Lisa. And, and I said to her, you know, this inter- this was about 1998 or so. This internet thing, I think it's going to go over one of these days. <laughs> <laughs> Little did I know. And we decided to, um, well, I had created a formula at the time, and we decided to uh, attempt to build a website. And let's just say it wasn't going to win any awards. And our, the, the product was starting to sell on the website. And we got a scathing email from somebody in Singapore that basically said, oh, I love your product, but this website, it really doesn't work. Mm-hmm. And we both kind of took a look at it and said, you know, pink and green and flashing and spinning. I, I see where they're coming from. So we redesigned <laughs> it. And boy, in about six months or so, we were in over 25 countries and from that time, we started expanding into other services and books and lectures and things along those lines. Wow. Thanks a lot for that awesome intro. Now, David, the foundation of this show is inspiration. And that is the reason why we begin each and every episode with an inspirational quote. So what is your favorite inspirational quote and how do you apply that quote to your daily life? Well, uh, AJ, I would say I have two of them. First one is as simple as can be, and it's follow your fascination. One of my teachers had mentioned that on multiple occasions. As soon as I heard that, that caught my attention. I have this big lettering with the words, follow your fascination in my office. And to me, that is when you open your heart and when you open your heart energy to inspiration, what is the message? What is your path? What is your Tao, so to speak? And when you follow it, either good, very good, or great things happen. And then the second one um, comes from, of all people, Napoleon. And it's circumstances, I create circumstances. And that's, uh, again, you, you have the opportunity to do what you wish, regardless of what you know, others say or what the, you know, the media says or what the world says or what have you, you can pursue your passion with enough dedication and with some information and with support. And like I said, great things happen. I'm, I'm living proof of it. Mm-hmm. So you mentioned follow your fascination. Those are a beautiful uh, a statement. And you mentioned that you have those in big letters with those words in your office. And when you said that, what came to my mind was the word spell. Now, we all know when somebody casts a spell, it's powerful. And sometimes you can't really control what happens to you. And the word spell comes from spelling. And when you say spelling, it's those words which so wonderfully are at your office. So I can imagine when you go to your office each and every morning, you feel inspired, you feel charged, you feel like making a difference because those words, David, have cast a spell on you. Would you agree? Absolutely. You you mentioned the word (laughs) inspiration, and of course that comes inspiration in spirit. Mm. And again, that in in natural medicine, the heart is viewed not only as the organ that's responsible for circulation of blood, but there is a non-physical aspect to it called the shen. And the shen is loosely translated as spirit. And Mm -hmm. spirit is... That part of us that, you know, when we're 100 years old and it's the last day on earth and that part of us that lasts after that would be considered our shin. And when we connect with all aspects of it and really listen to what it is encouraging us to do and encouraging us to follow, that's when we begin to become what we're capable of becoming. Mm -hmm. Well, thanks a lot for that explanation. And let's dive in. David, what inspired you to create the Doc Wellness Supplement? My patience. This was kind of funny because I I had never considered designing a formula. But I, mm-hmm. at the time, there were a lot of um, uh, great studies that had come out in major journals, like New England Journal of Medicine, that talked about anti-aging medicine. But at the time, that um, what was available was very limited, very expensive, and generally injectable. 
And I had patients that were basically saying, you know, you do this herb stuff. Have you ever thought of creating an herbal formula? Mm -hmm. To be frank, it was like, oh, boy, all right, I'll do In my head, I'm saying, I'll do it for you guys because you've treated me so well. I'll do this as a favor to you. Little did Mm -hmm. I know. Now, this is, uh, as I mentioned, this was in South Florida. And where I lived, or where I practiced, I should say, every, oh, third block, every fourth block, there seemed to be a health food store. So we can never compete with prices. So I had to come up, come up with something unique. And I did. And I thought, you know, if we sell 20 a month, I'd be happy with that. Mm-hmm. 20 a month became 20 a week. Sure. became, you know, how about people in Georgia started asking and people in New York. And like I said, next thing we know, we were in 20 different countries because of the internet. So it was really patience that I thought, <laughs> I thought I was doing them a favor. And the, the truth of the matter is they provided a huge gift to me. Mm-hmm. So you mentioned that you never really considered at the beginning to design a formula. You came across many studies in various journals, but what is available out there was very limited and really expensive. And looking at that, some of your patients saw you as that person who could create something for them, something that was very natural. And you took that opportunity. You saw that need to create a product. And listeners, I think that is the best way to create a product when there is a genuine need and you do it out of that authenticity to help a group of people. And what resonated with me, David, was that you started with 20, not expecting that it would scale up so wonderfully well, but you ended up in 20 different countries. So that's wonderful. Thanks a lot for sharing that remarkable story. Now, to gain some clarity, uh, what is HGH or human growth hormone and why do we need a supplement in the first place? Sure. Basically, that is the hormone that is produced naturally in our body by a okay. gland called the pituitary gland, which is in the brain. And as the name implies, when we're young, it allows us to grow. And when mm-hmm. we hit the age of about 31, it start, the production starts to stop or slow down, I should say. And we mm-hmm. start to witness the so- typical signs and symptoms of aging, the things that we're not too crazy about, uh, gaining of weight, lowering of energy, uh, wrinkles, all that fun stuff that comes along that we <laughs> consider it with aging. And uh, as I mentioned at the time, there was a famous study that came out, a huge study that came out, that when you supplement with that particular substance, that the typical signs and symptoms of aging can either stop, slow down, or even reverse. The problem that the study showed was, as I mentioned, it was only by prescription and very expensive. It was injectable. And when the body receives a hormone from an outside source, the gland that is responsible for its production has a tendency to atrophy or even shut down. In other words, it becomes dependent on an outside source. That's not the ideal. I mean, sometimes you have to do what you have to do, but it's less than the ideal situation. So what I did was create a uh, herbal-based formula so that your body, anyone's body, begins to produce the optimal levels of growth hormone naturally. So it strengthens that gland to produce its own substance. Mm-hmm. Now, that actually beautifully transitions into the next question that I wanted to ask you. You sort of hinted towards that, but is Doc Wellness supplement completely safe or without any side effects? Because that is normally the challenge with a lot of uh, medicines or you know things that are available out there in regards to, uh, you know, human growth hormone or some other, uh, you know, hormones is that uh, it, they normally come along with some side effects. Well, the nice part about this particular formula, it is not a hormone. It is a herbal-based formula that allows the body to produce its hormone. So in other words, you're not getting it from the mm. inside source. And the body views herbs, unlike vitamins and minerals and trace minerals, etc. The body views herbs as food. So it be, can be consumed on a consistent basis without any type of uh, tolerance being built up. So in terms of the safety level, we've had 
uh, over the years, we've collected information. It is extremely safe. Occasionally, we have people who are who may not be tolerant of one or two of the substances. Mm -hmm. Worst case scenario, they would take it after one dose. Their stomach may get upset. Maybe there's a rash. Uh, they stop taking it. We have a money back guarantee, of course. They stop taking it a day later. Everything's back to normal. But again, that is the rare exception versus the rule. Mm -hmm. So you mentioned that in your particular product, in Doc Wellness Supplement, you're not injecting the HGH, but you're actually enabling your body to create naturally the human growth hormone, which is natural and in a manner that is safe. Now, my question to you is mankind has constantly been searching for this immortality nectar for thousands of years for ways to stay young, to stay healthy, and to stay fit. And these days, there are numerous products around the globe that promise anti-aging, as you sort of suggested uh, as well. What are some of the other ways or other factors that suggest that uh, Doc Wellness Supplement is superior to the other products? It is a liquid format, so it's mm -hmm. uh, what's referred to as a tincture. So it's pre-digested. It's easier to digest than a pill form or a capsule form. The only thing better is an injectable of anything, mm -hmm. but, but liquid form is considered the ideal. Uh, we have had clinical tests run on it. We've had a long history of it. Uh, and as I mentioned, the, to me, the greatest feature is that it is based on herbs. The body views herbs as food. It can be taken consistently so that your body produces the optimal amounts of this particular hormone. And this hormone has been associated with improved energy, weight loss without exercise, improved muscle tonus, uh, immunity enhancement, libido enhancement. The list is quite extensive. Wow. Uh, mm -hmm. So you mentioned that it's a tincture and it's easy to digest. So that's good. Let's say somebody listening to the show right now says, wow, I'd like to try out this product. How soon can this person notice a difference? And what are some of the long term benefits of using this product? The herbs are what's known as adaptogenics. And what that means <laughs> is 10 people can take, there's an herb, for example, called schizandra, which always reminds me of something a magician would, would say, <laughs> but True. schizandra, and schizandra is uh, an adaptogenic, and 10 people can take schizandra, and uh, one of them may have this type of result, and three of them may have this, another type of result. So in other words, based on their chemistry, you can have significantly different results. I mean, they would be positive, but they would be different because everybody's mm -hmm. uh, system is different and the, er the herbs react differently with uh, each individual's chemistry. As a general rule, most people notice a significant difference within 10 to 14 days. We've had people, you know, two or three doses mention it. We've had people that take a little bit longer. Mm -hmm. There are multiple factors. Again, personal, individual chemistry is one of them. Do they lead a, a wellness type of lifestyle? Uh, are they eating fairly healthy? In other words, is this a part of an overall lifestyle or is this somebody looking for, you know, I'm going to have McDonald's and then I'll throw this into the mix. Obviously, that's not the way we like to kind of go about things. Mm -hmm. So I love the fact that you mentioned that it's not a magic pill. It's not as soon as you pop it, everything will change. But it's you sort of brought the importance of a lifestyle into the picture. In other words, you have this supplement, but you need to change other aspects of your life as well. Stuff such as meditation. I know that you recommend some breath work as well. Yes, absolutely. In fact, there is a a combination of the two that I have uh, taught and um, offer a course, an online course on. Mm -hmm. And if I may, a minute here, the quickest, simplest way that a person can begin to experience kind of a little taste of meditation uh, is what I refer to as living in the back. And what I mean by that is most of the time, life's dramas and stories and inner dialogue comes from the forebrain. So mm -hmm. it's literally right in front of us. And that's when the constant chatting, up, constant commenting and meta commenting about everything. It's very loud in there. But when you take a breath and bring your awareness, your energy and your consciousness literally to the back of your head, so it is as if you are looking at the back of your eyes, looking out at the world. 
And if you do this properly, it should take about half a second for things to get very still and quiet. Now, it takes a while, constant practice, only a lifetime, for that to kind of stick and become a way of life. But when you do it properly, and again, it just takes your awareness bringing it back to your spine or bringing back to the back of the head, looking out at the back of the eyes through the world to living from the back. And again, that's how a person begins to experience uh, not only a form of meditation, but that's when they begin to experience uh, inspiration. That's when things like, you know, I hadn't thought of this before, or I have been working on the, I have this great idea now, even though this problem <laughs> I've been working on, I never would have thought that. I, I do marath- I run one marathon a year, mm-hmm. and I'm not particularly good at it, but I always finish. And one of the things that I do, and one of the reasons that I do it, and number one, it makes me feel how appreciative it is to be alive. And number two, you get so tired that you get very quiet. And that's when, mm-hmm. again, inspiration, your muse, your Tao, whatever word works for you, begins to whisper. And by the time you're done, you know, at a 15-mile run or a 20-mile practice run, I, I feel physically exhausted but so rejuvenated with so many different ideas and, and uh, different thoughts and different projects all within a framework of stillness. It's very, very, it, it's quite unusual because it sounds like it's opposites, and in fact it is. But if mm. you look at the, uh, the Tai Chi symbol, the yin yang symbol, to yep. me that's living it when you experience things like that. Mm-hmm. So living at the back of your head. I love this particular health tip that you gave us. Most of the chatter, most of the constant self talk. I completely agree, is at the fore of the brain. The solution, dear listeners, is take a breath and take your consciousness to the back of your head, just like you have eyes at the back, so that you start afresh, you start anew, and that's when you can go into that different space when you are trying to meditate. It might not be completely easy, but at least making that first attempt, seeing how it feels, and then adapting your way, that's going to really help you on your journey towards meditation or mindfulness. So thanks a lot for that wonderful tip. Sure. If you go, if a person feels like the, the back of their, um, their hairline or where their hairline should be, generally about an inch and a half or so, they feel a bump on the back of the head. It's called the mm-hmm. external occipital protuberance. A lot easier to say bump on the back of the head. Basically, <laughs> that is where part of the brain called the cerebellum is. The cerebellum, among other things, is one of the backup systems to the heart, and it is it provides the electricity, so to speak, for the brain. But if you touch mm. that area and gently just tap it as a reminder to bring your awareness, to bring your energy, to bring your consciousness there and live from that perspective as much as possible, combine with some of the other meditation techniques that you had mentioned and just practice, practice, practice it will work wonders. In person, you can literally change your life by looking at things differently. And this is how you would do it. Mm -hmm. Thanks a lot for that. Now, the gym cannot be polished without friction, nor man perfected without trials. Now, this powerful proverb originated from ancient China. Now, trials, challenges, barriers, Problems and failures. These are some of the topics discussed in this particular round because as they say, failure is feedback. Feedback that can act as a stepping stone to success. So David, let's go back to a time when you faced a major challenge. What was going on in your mind at that time and how did you overcome the challenge? Oh boy, oh boy, that's a good one. Well, (laughs) uh, the best, well, the best is an interesting choice of words. There was a book that I had read and it talked about, I don't remember the exact name of it, but it talked about, you know, no money down in buying houses. Now, mind you, I have no interest in that area, but for some reason, I decided, I thought, my heart was telling me one thing, my head said, no, this is easy to do, you know, everybody's doing it. So I decided to do that and I ended up buying a second house 
And for the next uh, several years, I think I had about seven hours of sleep total because I kept worrying about it. I kept thinking, you know, a tree is going to fall through the roof or the plumbing is going to happen. It just was not for me. It was not my style. The, I want to say an hour after we sold it, I felt like a new person. And a a day after it, we got one of our biggest orders we've had in in five years. And uh, a series of wonderful things have been happening since that time. And I kind of looked at that house as, in retrospect, I'm glad I did it because I know how to mess up when I want to. Uh, Contrast (laughs) is a wonderful teacher. And I didn't follow my fascination. I followed somebody else's fascination and in somebody else's way, and it wasn't mine. But what it did teach me is that stay away from things that are of no interest and just continue on uh, of doing things that, that really light your fire. You know, I love to do things like martial arts. I teach martial arts. If somebody said, mm. get up in the, at 4 o'clock in the morning and train, I would consider that a gift. I'd love to do that. Mm-hmm. If somebody said, get up at four o'clock in the morning and learn about investing in real estate, oh, no, thank you. <laughs> so I would say that was the best, exper- best worst experience I've ever had. So in retrospect, what is it one major life lesson that our listeners can take away from your story? If it speaks to you, run with it, run with it like a deer. And if it does not... Uh, thank the person for introducing it to you and walk away because when your energy is divided or when your energy is going into an area that is of no interest to you whatsoever, it will get stuck. Literally, it'll get stuck and you'll feel it not only in your external world, but you'll feel it in your internal world and nothing good comes from that. Well, thanks a lot for sharing this story with us. Your story darts across the fabric of time and space and reminds us wherever we are at this very moment that our glory lies beyond our comfort zone, not worrying about making mistakes, not letting those moments prevent us from learning, but really following our fascination, following our passion. And the way we get to know that listeners is by following that little inner voice that tells you to either do or not do something and with that we dash into the true calling round everyone is here on earth for a purpose no matter what you're doing at this very moment whether you're doing a job or you're jobless or you're stressed out or you're worried about your future you are here for a particular reason and purpose and as you move on in your life the universe has its own way of putting those little breadcrumbs for you to follow. David, during this round, just imagine that you are in front of a large bonfire in the evening, sharing your experience with fellow tribe members who are longing to find their own life's purpose. On this powerful topic, Mark Twain once remarked, the two most important days in your life are the day you are born and the day you find out why. So my question to you is, have you found your life's purpose? And if yes, what is your purpose here on earth? I've always struggled with that particular question because I thought there was one answer. In other words, Mm -hmm. I I am here to do X, Y, Z. And once you find it or once I found it, then that was it. And Mm -hmm. over the years, I've come to the conclusion that my calling is to be happy. My calling is to be the best me that I can be. And in the process, I'm going to discover different paths, plural, along the way. In the beginning, as I mentioned, I did uh, mental health counseling, and then I did some uh, drug and alcohol counseling. And then I treated people for many, many years. And I got into, uh, in, when I was doing that, I would also do lectures and, and uh, uh, radio shows. And then we've, that evolved into internet business, and internet business expanded into online courses. Uh, in the last oh, five, six years, I started writing a lot more, uh, and I also opened up a martial arts school in my kind of private life, and so I don't, for me at least, there wasn't a thing that you know, I woke up and disco- discovered that, you know what, I'm going to be a this, and that's what I'm going to be for the rest of my life. I admire people who have that kind of calling, if that's their real calling. I am not one of them. I'm a... Uh, I don't know, modern day renaissance 
theory, man, Renaissance man approach to, to life. And I think that uh, that has made life very colorful and it has made uh, very interesting. I'm never bored. And I would say even at those moments when I'm not always 100% sure I, I, and, and there's some conflict or what have you, it, being in the moment and feeling the conflict and, and not sure which way to go, sometimes when you pull back, you could even enjoy those types of moments, kind of little stop signs or yield signs along the way, choices. Do I go left? Do I go right? I don't think there's a wrong way to go unless you decide to just stop. I think that's that would be the biggest message. Mm -hmm. Well, thanks a lot for sharing that your calling is to be happy. But in the process, find things to do that enhances or increases your happiness. Enjoying the process, enjoying the journey, enjoying the multiple steps that you take towards your destination. But not just focusing on that one calling, but having multiple callings, so to speak. Diving a little deeper, was there a specific moment in time when you realized that you were going to embark on your current purpose, the thing that you're doing right now? Yes. <laughs> I, I'm going to be very literal here. It was a Tuesday afternoon. I had a patient <laughs> who was uh, 89 years old. He had shingles, which is a uh, viral, inf very painful viral infection along a nerve. His ankles were swollen about three times their normal size, and he came in with his daughter, who was a, an MD. I treated him once. He came back the next week. The redness in the shingles was gone by about 75%. The ankles were normal for the first time in 30 years. He looked at me and said, but all we can do is try. I think I did not say a word for about five seconds, but it felt like about five hours because I couldn't process what just occurred here like this is really a great thing that happened to be honest mm -hmm. with you this is one of those divine intervention things but i'm going to get the, some credit for it <laughs> uh and yet somebody looked at it as but all we can do is try and then i realized you know i don't i i, I need to do something else and i i am pushing that feeling aside instead of instead of diving in the center of it and then once I started to say, okay, this is something, this is a wake-up call, so to speak, or this is a, an opportunity call. And I spent some time being quiet and, and kind of being by myself and looked at other options that I wanted to explore. And one of the questions, one of the questions that I always found very helpful is this. Somebody's going to give me $1 billion, but there's a catch. Mm -hmm. I have to do what I love. Not what I like, not what I really, really, really like. It has to be what I love. What would it be? <laughs> and the other question is, it, what would you get up at you know, 3 in the morning or 4 in the morning to do? And that's, to me, it's sort of the same question. Or the, the answer should be very similar, if not identical. And I realized, oh, I want, I want more time. To, to kind of pursue three different things that really caught my attention. And the Internet business gave me the opportunity to do that, to explore uh, product more so and to explore writing in a greater um, sense and to uh, explore lecturing and, and some of the other aspects. Mm -hmm. So you mentioned that you had a patient who had a definite medical challenge. He had shingles, ankles were swollen, and after the treatment, there was a big change because his ankles were normal, redness was all gone, and he said something to you that made you stop and think for a moment is, all we can do is try. And sometimes it's funny how the universe sends us messages, nudges or hints that inspire us to move in a direction and wake up to another opportunity. And thanks a lot for reminding us that listeners Wherever we are in life, we have so many labels, you know, labels that we are a doctor or maybe uh, a lawyer or an engineer. These are all just labels. But deep down, what we really are is the light that shines through all of these different labels. And that enables us to head toward our journey, whether it's finding a new calling, finding a new thing to do. Maybe it's writing, becoming a poet, becoming an artist. There is no limitation. The only limitation is that what you create in your mind. So thanks a lot, David. And with that, we come to the very end. We come to the last round of today's episode. But if you ask me, this is my favorite round. During this round, our action takers, our listeners take notes 
and take action. So are you ready? I am ready. What is the best advice that you have ever received? There was a gentleman who took a test. It was a final test for a master's degree in business. And he sat mm. down, got the paper, looked at the paper. It was blank. Turned it over. It was blank. And asked the teacher, said, there's nothing on here. And the teacher said, I only have one question for you. What is the name of the person who cleans this room? He could not answer it, of course. And the moral of the story was, make sure that you recognize that everyone matters. Mm-hmm. What is that one personal habit that enhances the quality of your life? Being active. Uh, being active moves the energy. Being active moves the blood. Being active, particularly in nature, you know, it allows you to connect with different types of energies. It allows you to clear space so that inspiration can fill it. You don't always have to work hard and, mm. and grind things out. Sometimes if you do less, more comes to you. So, David, let's talk about your morning. What is your morning ritual like? Well, based on what I just said, it's very predictable. <laughs> I either <laughs> run or I train in a um, uh, one martial art called uh, Toyamaru Batu Jitsu, which is a sword uh, technique or mm-hmm. sword training with sword. And we use what's called a shinken, which uh, they're as sharp as a uh, surgical instrument. So you need to wow. be very focused. So my morning is some days are either with the sword or some days I will go for a long run and just be active. And once I feel clear and focused and then I can come into the office, do what I need to do and, um, and then proceed from there. Mm-hmm. So what is that one book that you would recommend our listeners read? Well, I'm going to throw a curveball at you here. One of the books I had read within the last year was called Light and Shade. And it is by, of all people, an interview with the legendary guitarist Jimmy Page from uh, Led Mm. Zeppelin. Now, I do not, my wife is the musician. I don't know, I'm not even sure how to spell half of the words she uses. But (laughs) it was an absolutely brilliant book. And it talked about accessing the creative self. And I think that regardless of what career you are in, creativity is something that you can always wear and it will improve your business, it will improve your life, and it will improve your connection to people. Mm -hmm. That really reminds me, whichever artist or entrepreneur or somebody who performs and serves people, whoever I've asked, they all have a particular ritual that allows them to access the creative self and even Tony Robbins he says that he does something before each and every show that gets him into that peak state and when he is in peak state it's really different from when he is conversing regularly with his friends and family but when he gets into that peak state it's as if the universe just swoops into him and allows him to become his best self so that all those people who have come for his conference can really take in that energy and take action. So thanks a lot for sharing this beautiful term, accessing the creative self. So action takers, in case you're driving or you're ordering a cup of coffee at Starbucks and you just can't take notes right now, I got your back. In order to check out the show note page for today, go to my 7 slash David. That's my S-E-V-E-N C-H-A-K-R-A-S dot com slash David. So David, it was such an honor having you on our show today. Before you go, tell us one thing that you're really grateful for and then tell us the best way we can find you. Ah, boy, to, to narrow it down to one thing is difficult, but right at the top of the list, <laughs> I would say my wife. Um, to me, the greatest compliment one human being can give to another is that because you are in my life, I am a better person. And because she is in my life, I am certainly a better person. And I can be reached. I have two main sites. The first one is HGHPLUS, as in Sam, HGHPlus.net. And the other is DocWellnessWorld.com, DocWellnessWorld.com. And you can reach me by email at David at DocWellnessWorld.com. Thanks a lot for sharing. Action takers, what we discussed today is just a small portion of the abundant wisdom that awaits you. Human growth hormone, uh, reducing your wrinkles or maybe getting towards that peak state of health in a way that's very natural has 
you know no side effects obviously you need to consult somebody who spent a lot of time doing this researching this coming out with this product so head on to hghplus.net or you can head on to talkwellnessworld.com or if you just can't wait then send an email to david at david at talkwellnessworld.com and get to know more take some action as i always say try out something if it works for you great if it doesn't then try something else because at the end of the day there is no one fit solution for every one so david thank you so much for coming on our show today and taking us one more step closer to a human revolution thank you aj this was absolutely enjoyable you were listening to my seven chakras go to my s e v e n chakras.com download your free gift get inspired and take action transform your life today